Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Quran Girl here, and I wanted to review with you what we've gone over so far. We've gone, we've been doing alaqat al huruf, and the rules that we've learned so far are harfan al mutamathilan, where letters are the same, same means same makhraj, same sifat, same letter, right? And the rule that we use is idham. And um, for examples, we did the words, um, let's see, we did yudrikku uh, and waqaddakhalu, right? It's almost like the first one disappears, the first letter with the sukun disappears, and we're just pronouncing the second letter, which is the same as the first, um, as if it has a shadda, right? Yudrikku and waqaddakhalu. Right? So that's the um, harfan al mutamathilan. Then we did harfan al mutajanisan, and we said mutajanisan means that they are similar. So basically, they have the same um, makhraj, but some of their sifat differ. Right? And examples of those were seven, uh, we talked about seven different categories. There's actually eight, and we're going to go over that eighth one today, because the eighth one is contested. According to Hafsa Nalsim, it is Mutajanisan. According to um, others, it isn't. So because the scholars differ, um, we haven't talked about it yet, but we're going to do that today and continue on from the last video. But just to recap, what we did in the last video with Harfan and Mutajanisan is we talked about Mutajanisan is basically where they are um, similar, the makhraj is the same, but the sifat are not always, um, you know, not all the sifat are the same. So examples of that, and, and in all those cases we do idgham, kamen, except for one of those cases. And that one case is where a tafkhim letter comes before a tarqiq letter, ta, ta, right? For example, ta, ta, but, um, the example would be basat, Basata. You're not going to say basata. You're going to say basata. Basata. So you hear a little bit of the tafreen to show that there was a tafreen letter before. In all the other examples um, where we had, so the examples that we had before were we just talked about the ta and the ta, right? Was number one and then number two. And so this was the only one that was a dram nakis, okay? So I'll put an N right there for Nakis. The rest are all going to be Idram Kamen. So we have Ta and Ta. Fa'amanat Ta'ifa. Right? We just go straight into the Ta sound. Um, the next one is, uh, let's see. Let's do, let's do Ta and Da next. Ta and Da. Right? Um, the example of that was Then we had number four was the opposite of this. Da and da. And the example we gave was No dal sound there. And certainly no qalqara either. Then we said the fifth one was um, so we've done ta 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 ta. Now we're going to do um, the vo. And the example for that was ilvolemtum ilvolemtum again because of completed ram. You're just seeing the vo. Then we had number six, which was the. And sorry, the and the, and that one was You're not going to say yalhadhalika. No, you're going to just say yalhadhalika. No, um, no uh, humps there. Yalhadhalika. Oops, there's the dot. And then we also talked about number seven last time, which was ba and meme. And ba and meme example 
would be أركب معنا أركب معنا أركب معنا so you're not hearing the ب neither the قلقل after ب you're just going straight into the meme أركب معنا alright now the uh, we said that there was an eighth and the eighth I think I have my Arabic numbers right I can't remember if I'm always messed up between the seven and the eight and I think eight is with it downward I think yes no I think it's the other way I think seven is with it down right and eight is with it up all right so for number eight we have Ra and Lam all right Ra uh, sorry the other way around Oopsie. I'm thinking Yar Malum so it's actually Lam and Ra all right so with Lam and Ra let's see what example do we have here وَقُلْ رَبِّي زِدْنِي عِلْمًا وَقُلْ رَبِّي So you're not going to say وَقُلْ رَبِّي No, you're going to say وَقُلْ رَبِّي زِدْنِي عِلْمًا According to حَفْسًا عَلْصِمْ عَلْ ذَلِكَ الشَّبْدِ So this would be the eighth rule of المتقاربان Now, uh, sorry, of المتجانسان I'm skipping ahead of myself So these are all the rules of متجانسان Now when we talk about the next two rules, which are going to be متقاربان and متباعدان, okay, um, let's see. And the reason that I accidentally said متقاربان is because some people think, some scholars believe the lamb and the ra are متقاربان. Now, متقاربان and um, and the reason they think that is because remember you have the takrir, uh, not the takrir, sorry, the um, takrir is where you pronounce the ra with a with a light trill, right? Um, no, I'm talking about the sifa that is um, inhiraf, inhiraf, right? Um, inhiraf, if you remember, you have it with the nam and with the ra, because they are uh, being blocked from a certain point where you start the sound from and so they come out of a different place. Do you remember in Hiraf, the Lamara? So that's why because of those um, some scholars believe that they are mutaqariban. But according to Hafsan Asim and Asim and Tariqa Shatbiya, they are mutajanisan, the lamb and Ra. Now um, what can make you best explain mutaqariban and mutabaidan? Uh, which are the next two that we're going to learn. I'll write them here. Mutaqariban. Um, comes from the word qarib, which means close. Okay? That means close. And mutaba'idan comes from the uh, word ba'id, which means far. Okay? Really simple, actually. Honestly, really simple. For example, you know that a Hamza is nowhere near a meme, right? Because where does meme come from? Um, right? We say it comes from the Shafatan. We say it has a Ghanna sound. comes also from Taishun part of it. So we know that that is nowhere near a Hamza. Where does a Hamza come from? Hamza comes from Aqsal Haluk, right? So like, they're like really far apart, right? So those are mutabaidan, clearly. So for example, a mean and a hamza. But how about, okay, if you had, if you look at just the huruf al-halq, this is my example of, this is my drawing of a throat right there. Um, we said there's hamza, ha, ayn, ha, and the ghayn, kha, right? So are we going to say the hamza and the ghayn are qareeb or ba'id? Hmm, well, because they have a letter in the middle, these two are considered ba'id, okay? They are considered ba'id for that reason, because they are, um, they are interrupted by another coming in between, okay? So that's why these two are considered ba'id, all right? Um, 
Now, same with um, what the Qariban would be the exact opposite. If you have the Huruf al Harif and you have a Ghain and an Ain, these two are Qarib. There's nothing coming in between them. They're very close. Or if you look at the, don't laugh at my drawings, but this is the tongue and this is the back and you have Qaf and you have Kaf and they're both hitting the soft palate but the Kaf is also hitting the hard palate. These are mutaqariban, right? Because they're coming from um, the same makhraj point, but um, they are not, uh, they're kind of coming from the same makhraj point, right? They kind of, kind of, um, because they're close to each other, kind of. So they're pretty close to each other, pretty close to their makhraj points, and also um, pretty close in sifat. So that's why it's called close, mutaqariban. And then is it's far. So basically in then you're always going to have ithar. The rule is always going to be ithar for then because you always want to pronounce every letter always unless it has a rule of something coming in there that makes you pronounce it differently from ithar. All right? That ithar is always the basic rule by which you go by. So for mutaqariban, The cases in which you have mutaqariba are um, for qaf and kaf, just like I just said, qaf and kaf, all right? So obviously there's many letters that are close to each other, but when we're talking about these specific cases, those actually fall under this rule where then you're going to apply a specific um, uh, way of recitation. So for qaf and kaf, um, if we say, uh, for example, nak, look, tom. Excuse my writing sideways here. You are not going to pronounce the qaf with the qalqala. You are not really going to pronounce the makhraj of the qaf. You are going to drop it and you're going to do idram kamil. Just like in the Jamisan. So, nak, look, kum, nak, look. Kum, all right? You're not going to pronounce the qaf at all. That is the first case of mutaqariban, is idram. In this case, you have idram kamil. The second case where you're also going to have idram kamil, I'll just put ik, is in al ashamsiya. Al Ashamsiya and Al Al Qamariya. So basically, I pulled this up on my Wikipedia. I'm going to show it to you. You can Wikipedia Sun and Moon letters. And this is they, alright? So the ones in black are the moon letters, also known as Haruf al Qamariya. And the ones in red are known as Haruf al Shamsiya. Alright? And basically, what that is, is Haruf al Shamsiya. Um, are the ones where this applies, right? Um, it is muta al mutaqariban uh, rule, and basically it is going to be the rule of idram kamil applied to it, right? So you basically drop the sound of the lamb, and you are just um, going to pronounce the next letter after it. So like as shems, I'll write an example here. You're going to just pronounce a uh, and then straight to this sheen, right? You're not going to say al shams, you're going to say as shams. So that's always whenever you have uh, alif shamsia, you're always going to have, uh, I mean, the uh, al as shamsia, you're always going to have with um, a qariban case. And the third rule. Because there's only three, is a noon or tanween followed by yarmalu. So if you have a noon or a tanween followed by yarmalu. So whenever you have a noon or tanween followed by yarmalu, you always know that it's going to be idram, right? You're going to have idram kamil, 
if it's for the Ra and the Lam following the Nun Sakit, and if it's the Ya, Mim, or Wow, then you're going to have the Idgham Nakis. Um, where's Noon? Why isn't it Yer Malun? We already know this rule, right? Well, if it was a Noon second followed by another Noon second, we would have Mutamathilan. Very good. So that's why it doesn't fall under Mutaqariban. So this is pretty much a rule you already know of Idram. Um, and so we know that these two cases are Idram Kamel. I don't know. Can you see? Oh dear. You haven't been able to see this last bit right there. Okay, there we go. All right. So those two cases are Idram Kamel. And then the Noon second followed by the Ya, Mim, or Wow is Idram Nakis. And that's pretty much it. Um, just so you know, there are other scholars that do bring two other scenarios into Mutaqariban, and um, that would be for a dal sakin and a dad. And uh, some say you would you would pronounce it fa but according to Hafsan Asim, you would pronounce it fa right? So, and then the second one that other scholars believe um, is ta and tha, right? And um, that they feel like it would be pronounced thamudu. But we wouldn't say that. We would say thamudu. So we would pronounce it with izhar. Um, so we are not going to concern ourselves with that. I won't put that on the list. I don't want to confuse you. Hope this was helpful. Inshallah, next we are going to be doing Alifat al-Sabah. Inshallah, see you then. Assalamu alaikum.